Welcome back to ADHD Whiskey. My name is Matt. And tonight, or today, we're discussing the top five most underrated bourbons on my bar. Friggin' five of them. I know a lot of you out there are all like, I'm sick of the top five this and the top five that. Well, here's the top five things I have to say to you. Shut it, shut up, shut it down, shutter town, and sh shut the mother up. Because this top five list might not be for you, but it'll be for a lot of other people who click on it. There's a lot of people out there chasing all the unicorns and all the stuff that's like allocated and really super hard to find. The five bourbons on this list might not be the easiest things to find in the world, but they aren't unicorns. These five whiskeys might be difficult to find, but they're worth finding and you could find them. These five bourbons could potentially be seen on a shelf by you somewhere, if not at home where you live, potentially in your travels out of state, who knows. I'm making this list so that when you see these five bourbons, you know that they're worth picking up, even at their price point. So if you have a problem with that, click the thumbs up, leave a comment below telling me how awesome the video was, hit the subscribe button and get the fuck out. Number five on my list. Some people are gonna have a problem with this one right out of the gate because some people say that these are overrated and what I have to say to you people are wrong. El Rongo, Rongi, Rong, Rongari, Wrong Turn, I don't know. The fact that you can still find old Carter bourbons on a shelf anywhere is weird and ridiculous. These vary batch to batch, but these are ridiculously good. The single barrels, fantastic. Their blends, fantastic. If you see a particular batch in a local store, do a little Google search find some reviews, see where it's distilled, see where it came from, see what people think about it. But nine times out of 10, these are a buy. If it's in your budget, these deserve a spot on your bar. Number four. My number four most underrated bourbon on my bar is this son of a bitch. Boone County Weeded Single Barrel. This one is a seven year. This one I found in Michigan. In Michigan, I find nothing except for absolutely nothing. And I was still able to find one of these. I'm not sure how widely this is distributed. I don't know, could be not very wide at all. But this is a ridiculously good weeded bourbon. It's so good. If you can't find your pappies or your wellers and you want a really good quality weeded bourbon, right here. If you see a Boone County single barrel weeded bourbon on the shelf and it's like around a hundred bucks, make it your own. Bring it home. Pour yourself some and love it. Love it hard. Love it like it never did you wrong. And just put a ring on it because it's good in bed. And by that, I mean, if you drink enough of it, it'll put you to sleep. Number three, my number three most underrated bourbon on my bar is friggin' George Remus Repeal Reserve. This one is series three, and I believe that there's been four so far. All of these are tremendous and really good. This is sourced MGP. I see these like everywhere, and I'm like, how in the heck do people not just buy this up? 100 proof, 12 to 13 year old MGP, ridiculously good, definite buy, definite try, if you don't have one on your bar, then what the heck is wrong with you? Number two. My number two most underrated bourbon whiskey that I have on my bar comes from Lux Road Distillery. And it is this son of a bee. When I was in Kentucky, I saw this thing like in several stores and I was like, I want that. And Dan and Julie like were like, here, I bought one for you. And I'm like, you're the best. This bottle has no place on a shelf at any store anywhere. And if you find yourself in Kentucky, you'll see them. Lux Row 12 year. It's a double barrel 12 year son of a bitch. 118.4 proof, cask strength, double barreled, maybe Heaven Hill, maybe. So stupid good. The bottle's also beautiful. The bourbon is as beautiful as the bottle, and that's so good. America. Woo. 
That's one of those trailer bottles that got real hot. This is a home run in any ballpark in America. 600 foot straightaway center field with a 40 mile an hour wind headed straight towards home plate. Guess what? Home run every time. This is like Mark McGuire on steroids. Took steroids that Mark McGuire on steroids didn't even know about and just jacked it out of the park. Sorry I get so excited, but this Lux Row Double Barrel 12 Year Bourbon Whiskey is so underrated. And I'm telling you about it so that you buy some if you come across it and it's in your price range. Love it so much. That brings us to my number one, my numero uno, my most underrated bourbon whiskey on my bar. Also comes from Lux Row Distiller, and it is a Rebel Yell single barrel 10 year weeded bourbon whiskey. This bottle supposedly comes from Heaven Hill, supposedly. It's also supposedly 10 years old. You can tell by the little label here and the 10 years there. And then it says 10 everywhere on the bottle, 10 year single barrel. These single barrels are ridiculously good. If you think about 10 year weeded bourbon from Heaven Hill, you think about what is that one bottle? Um, oh yeah, Old Fitzgerald, the one in the sleek, sexy decanter. Those are like nine year to 16 year weeded bourbons from Heaven Hill. Huh, and those are impossible to find and ridiculously expensive. This is 10 year Heaven Hill weeded distillate being sold to Lux Row. So if that's actually true, and this is 10 year weeded bourbon from Heaven Hill, this is just like a single barrel Old Fitzgerald in this bottle. But wait, there's more. Cause there's a date on here and it says, aged since December 2005. What is it now? I just bought this bottle, what is it now? Now it's June 2021. Is this 10 years old or is it 16 years old? I have no, I have no idea. I emailed Lux Row Distillery and asked them the question, is this 10 years or older because it tastes older? And they said that these were bottled in spring 2020, meaning that this son of a bitch is over 14 years old. I bought this bottle for like $70 and guess what? It's a 14 year old we did bourbon single barrel, supposedly, hypothetically from Heaven Hill. I think this is by far the most underrated bourbon on the planet. And I said that and I kind of stand by it and mean it. I know not everybody is gonna agree with this list, so if I forgot something, leave a comment below. Let me know what I forgot. Let me know which one I left off the list. My name is Matt. This is ADHD Whiskey, and like I always say, keep your head in the clouds, but your mind on not chasing the things that are impossible to find, because you're never gonna find them, because it's impossible. Instead, chase the things that are findable, that are just as good or better, because guess what? Still super happy, and even if you don't have the pappy, you still have something that's really good in your mouth or belly. That didn't rhyme, my bad. What I'm trying to say is get the stuff you can get that's still super good, and don't chase after the shit that you just can't ever find, because impossible. And I'm learning that too. Sometimes the outros don't go as well as I would like, and then I think about it all night while I toss and turn in my bed and wonder how I could have done it better. And then I tell myself, basically anything would have been better. And then I have a nightmare about falling from a bridge and I land next to a bounce house on a slab of concrete and it doesn't end well. I do wake up though, but my back hurts the next day. Not sure if I slept on it wrong or if it was the concrete. Probably the latter or former or something. Good night.